Welcome back to the Midweek Update. Hey Mepham, welcome to this week's episode of the Midweek Update. Today, let's talk about the Book Fairies collection and the review of the school year so far. This and more as we take a look at what's going on this week on the Midweek Update. I'm Haley Hepworth. And I'm Hannah Broxmeyer, and welcome back to the Midweek Update, the BNB show that brings you closer to the people and places in and around the Mepham community. Welcome back to the show, Hannah. Thanks, I'm glad to be here. It's so weird recording this from two different studios, though. Definitely. This year has been a weird one for b and and everyone else. For sure. The first few months of the school year have definitely been interesting. b and Emily Rosenberg recapped the start of this school year. During summer vacation, many students couldn't believe we would actually be going back to school in September. The coronavirus was still happening, and it seemed as though nothing would go back to normal. However, thanks to the hard work of students, administrators, and teachers, we are now back full-time. I think the fact that students and staff have been complying with uh, the PPE, which includes wearing masks, staying behind barriers, not only in their classes, but in the cafeterias, and just uh, making sure that they keep each other safe, not only in school, but also outside of schools. For students and teachers, the changes made to ensure safety were especially hard to get used to. Um, it's affected our schoolwork because it's a really different learning style, like through the virtual and the hybrid. It's just kind of a little hard. I didn't expect that we would be, I, I didn't expect how much um, distance the barriers were going to place on the students and, and, uh, and for me to the students. So I feel like that's, that's been something hard to remind myself to make sure that I'm calling on people and checking in with people. It's very hard for everyone, it's, it's very actually, it's very easy for everyone to kind of sit in their own little space and, and uh, pretend to be invisible but it's quite another thing to make sure that everybody is not invisible. When you're at home and no teacher is around you, so you're on your phone most of the time. For the administrators, their decision to go back full time was a steadfast belief, despite all the difficulties. I think kids in general and also the staff, we wanted to see our colleagues, you wanted to see your friends. Socialization is such a big part of any educational experience. And in order for students to feel like they were truly getting the best out of their MEPM experience, coming back was the right decision. Even with these difficulties, throughout the first quarter of school, faculty and students learned many things about themselves. So, you know, working in a classroom, sometimes you feel like you're getting a little stagnant, you're feeling like you're not exposed to the world and you're not growing. And I have to say that this situation has forced us all to be more creative and more innovative in developing those lessons and getting around uh, the barriers literally and figuratively. Um, I've learned that uh, your expectations always don't meet reality and you have to just be prepared for anything going into a new experience. I have learned how to adjust to certain situations. We are all so grateful to be back. For b and I'm Emily Rosenberg. Thanks, Emily. I'm really hoping that school and everything else starts to look more normal as the school year goes on. There are still a lot of things going on now, though. Right, and one of those is the Book Fairies collection. BMB's Michelle Spoer got an inside look of the drive and its purpose. Books open a whole new world of imagination for people throughout the world. The Book Fairies, a not-for-profit organization, collect reading material for people all throughout New York. The Book Fairies really started because I saw that there were two groups of people that needed help. There was one group who had too many books in their house and they needed them out. And on the other hand, we had people located right on Long Island who were in desperate need of these books. So we have now been eight years. Uh, we've donated over two and a half million books. We have broken the Guinness World Record for longest book chain. And through the Book Fairies charity, we are truly changing the face of literacy in our area. There is a cycle of poverty that stems from illiteracy, and illiteracy really seems to travel down through the generations. So if we can break this cycle and get kids to learn how to read, start moving through the school districts, up to higher education, to better paying jobs, it really impacts all of society, and it's for the betterment of all of society. 
Even during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Book Fairies organization continues to donate books to children, teens, and adults all throughout New York. COVID has altered every aspect of how we work. Um, we used to be able to come in here and sort books with 25, 30 people in the warehouse. Now we limit it to eight, uh, which has drastically impeded the amount of books, books that we can get through and get out. And, um, you know, just being able to come in and, and go as we please, it's just changed everything. We have to follow CDC guidelines. Everybody has to be six foot apart or wearing masks in the warehouse, um, cleaning. It, it just has impeded everything. But what it has it really done for us, it has shown that our books are so essential. The kids that are getting our books were left in the dark. They literally, the only access they had to books were in their schools or in their classrooms. And now they went home and they had no books. So this has really highlighted the fact that our mission is truly important and that we need to work harder than ever. We really would have loved to just curl up like everybody else did during quarantine and not come into the, to the warehouse and just let things settle down. But it was an option for us. Our mission was really needed and we worked really hard and we figured out how to pivot and get the books moving. And to date, we've distributed over 250,000 books since COVID has hit. To get involved and help the book fairies, you could donate books to 70 North Main Street in Freeport, New York from Tuesdays to Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Make sure you schedule a donation time at bookfairies.org. From B&B, I'm Michelle Spiller. Thanks, Michelle. Drives like these are always great, but they're especially helpful during these times. Yeah, and I'm glad they're able to be up and running now with no signs of stopping. Speaking of things that are showing no signs of stopping, let's talk about the election. While we seem to have a winner, this transition period should be one of the more interesting ones that we've had in a while. Yeah, and to keep everyone informed as it continues, here's B&B Charles Lashinsky with Transition Definitions. The cabinet is one of the most important parts of a presidential administration as it contains the people in the most important positions in the country. For example, the White House Chief of Staff is the person who oversees the actions of the members and staff in the White House. They manage the president's schedule and their meetings, and they also control who has access to the Oval Office. President-elect Joe Biden has chosen Ron Klain to take over the job in 2021. The Secretary of Defense is a leader that controls the armed forces of the United States. Appointed by a Senate and confirmed, appointed by a president and confirmed by a Senate, the Secretary of Defense works with civilian and military advisors to formulate American military policy and make foreign policy recommendations to the president. Michelle Flournoy is being considered to be the leading candidate of Secretary of Defense by President-elect Joe Biden. The U.S. Secretary of State carries out the President's foreign policies through the State Department and the Foreign Service of the United States. The top candidate for the job is Anthony Blinken, who served as the Deputy Secretary of State under President Obama. The Attorney General is the Chief Legal Officer of the United States, representing the United States in international legal cases and giving the legal opinions to the President and the rest of the administration. The most speculated candidates are outgoing Alabama Senator Doug Jones, and former Acting Attorney General Sally Yates. For, for transition definitions, I'm Charles Lashinsky. Thanks, Charles. Stay tuned to transition definitions for the latest as this transition period continues. And now that Charles has given us an update on that, it's time for an update on sports from BMB's Connor Ward. Thanks, Haley. Today is the start of spring intramurals. Track, girls lacrosse, tennis, and softball are today, and the rest of the spring sports kick off at the end of the week. Fall intramurals ended on a bit of a disappointing note last week as the rain washed away the flag football championships. 2020, what can you do? We're still waiting on word from the state on the future of winter sports. The state approved non-contact sports like winter track, swimming, and bowling, so hopefully those sports will start on time. Check back here or with Sean on the morning announcements for details as they become available. Be on the lookout for the next sports talk dropping in the days ahead, featuring the latest faces in the cases, a look at the change that could be on the horizon in women's sports. And the latest man o minute from b, &B I'm Connor Ward. Thanks, Connor. I'm excited to see the future of the BMCHSD sports as the year continues. Me too. Well, that's it for this week's Midweek Update, but stick around at the end for an inside look into B&B's control room during the production of the show. And we'll be back next week with all new stories from around the BMCHSD to bring you inside of the parts of the community that we don't always get to see. Until then, I'm Haley Hepworth. 
and I'm Hannah Braxmeyer, and we'll see you all next midweek. Thank <laughs> you. 